Welcome to Holistic Accountant Podcast, where we aim to showcase how adopting a holistic approach in accounting and tax maximizes value for clients. Beyond traditional tasks like preparing financial statements and tax returns, a holistic accountant focuses on offering advice that maximizes personal wealth on an after-tax basis. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rating and sharing it with those who might also benefit. And to ensure you stay updated, subscribe to our weekly email. The link is in the show notes. Okay, today Mina and I would like to talk about what investment costs are tax deductible. So that is if you're making investments, whether in personal name, in a trust or in other entities, of course, that uh, expense needs to be attributed to that entity. But uh, we thought it was interesting to have a think about what costs are associated with earning accessible income with respect to those investments uh, that you can deduct. Because as long as you um, keep really good records, uh, obviously the, the aim is to try and deduct as, as many costs as possible. So the first one that I'd like to talk about is capital costs. So they're the costs that you uh, that the expenses that you incur before you actually purchase the investment, uh, they're typically called capital costs and they're added to the cost base. So you don't get a deduction for them in the year that you spend the, those monies. You uh, what, what you do is actually reduce your capital gain when you eventually sell the asset. So they can be uh, advice fees. Uh, if it's a property, it could be a buyer's agent fee, stamp duty, building inspections, any research reports or so forth, if it's share investing, any of those sorts of expenses that you incur before you buy the investment, uh, you you really need to retain those records um, and and keep a list because that'll go to the cost base and make sure you uh, share that with your holistic accountant. As as I said, you're not going to get a benefit for that up front, um, but certainly it'll help you reduce your capital gains tax. The next type is uh, educational costs. So educational costs such as, for example, seminars um, you attend before you purchase a property or, um, you know, co- training for share trading or, or or whatever it is, those kind of costs before you actually purchase your investment are also considered capital like Stuart mentioned before. So that means they're added to your cost base and they only come become factored in once you actually come to sell the asset. Um, specialist journals or subscriptions, so uh, particularly for share investors, all the share investors subscribe to, you know, sort of share tipping newsletters and those sorts of things, they're tax deductible. If you've got sort of general newspapers and so forth, you might have to, we will have to apportion the cost because some of it's going to be personal and some of it's going to be related to investment. Although I guess if you've got a A newspaper like the Australian Financial Review, you could probably argue most of that cost is associated with making investment decisions. So if there's not a direct link, you know, if if you don't, you wouldn't otherwise have that subscription or newspaper if you didn't have the investments, then you'll probably need to apportion. But if the only reason that you've got that subscription is the fact that you've got these investments, then typically there's a direct, what they call direct nexus uh, with the income and expense and it's deductible. Uh, the next type is interest expenses. So uh, in a lot of cases, you would uh, obtain a loan to purchase a property or some shares such as, you know, what we call margin lend. Um, though interest expenses associated directly with your investment or your purchase, your asset, are tax deductible. However, when it comes to property, um, it becomes a little bit tricky because if you start incurring interest expenses prior to actually leasing the property, Generally, those interest expenses are considered capital in nature. Now, that's that's a bit dependent on what uh, type of entity you're in. But generally, if you're a, if you're just a personal investor, you've bought, for example, a house and land package. Um, the interest ex- expenses whilst you're you're building that that house is c- considered capital in nature. Internet access and computer expenses. When I say computer expenses, you know, de- de- depreciate your computer. Uh, So most of us would need a computer and internet access to manage our investments. Now, of course, we we probably also use our internet and computer for other purposes, personal purposes. So you're not going to be able to claim 100%. You're going to need to be able to apportion uh, your claim and you're going to have to have some sort of basis uh, for doing so. So I would argue that if you've got, you know, very few investments, that proportion is going to be relatively low. If you've got a lot of investments and you genuinely use those, the internet access and computer and any other peripherals, 
uh, significantly, you know, a lot, a lot of time is spent on them, um, then obviously that proportion is higher. The finally, the last expense that you might might commonly uh, incur are financial advice fees um, or, or professional advice fees. So generally, um, those fees are tax deductible. And uh, um, I forget the tax determination number, Stuart. Do you do you remember off the top of your head? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> well, those fees are generally tax deductible. Um, especially whilst you have the asset. Um, Advice fees relating to uh, uh, advice fees prior to your actual purchase of the asset, a portion of it could be considered capital in nature, but it's likely that a portion would be also tax deductible. So what you have to do there is ask whoever's giving you the advice, ask them to apportion the fee uh, as in uh, to, to determine what a portion of the fee relates to existing investments and what relates to prospective investments. Of course, they probably won't be able to do that up front. They'll only be able to do that once they've completed the work, but that's important. I think overall, just to sort of leave you with one bit of advice, which is record keeping. If you keep uh, really good records, that'll at least help your accountant trawl through your expenses and work out which ones they think are deductible outright, uh, which need to be apportioned and and which are non-deductible items. But your accountant, your holistic accountant, doesn't know what he doesn't know. So if you don't keep those good records, uh, then that's obviously not a, a possibility. Okay, that's it for this week. Bye for now.